Welcome back to Broken Sylvia. My name is Damien and as you guys have seen that have been following the R34 rebuild, you have seen that it has been many, many months of sanding and preparing the car for paint. But I'm happy to say that all those jobs are finally done. So in the previous episode, we stripped the underside of the car and prepared it for its new undercoating. The new undercoating system was applied, which included a variety of products such as rust converter, zinc primer, seam sealer, underbody protection, and gloss black enamel paint, which we still have to apply now that the car is painted. So in this episode, as I mentioned, we'll be showing you guys everything that has been going on behind the scenes and also showing you guys some color options and the pros and cons of each. Let's get started. So here I'm just using a grinder with a wire wheel on the end to remove all the factory seam sealer inside the engine bay. Of course those sections will have new seam sealer reapplied and the reason for doing this is just to make everything nice and neat because the factory seam sealer is not very pretty. The aircon setup that is located behind the dashboard also got removed so I can pull through the engine wiring harness and obvious reasons are so I can paint the engine bay. So it's the next day and here I'm just using a bit of waxing grease remover to remove any grease or dirt that is in the engine bay. Uh, that will allow us to have a nice clean surface so when I spray the high fill primer throughout the whole engine bay we're not going to get any weird reactions and the job is going to be done properly so that's what I'm going to do right now. Hey 
With all the seam sealer in the engine bay almost complete, it's slowly time to move to the back of the car and refinish the boot. Pretty much I'm just masking it off and using a bit of the underbody protection to make it nice and neat and the rubberized coating will also provide a bit of a sound deadening which is a bonus. So later that day I had my friend Preston swing by and give me a hand to make a stand for the car. Preston has a beautiful S15 you might have seen in a previous episode, but yeah. The reason why we're making a stand for the car is because the subframes have been pulled off the R34 and dropped off at the power decoders. Also all my new bushings, bearings and stuff like that uh, have not arrived yet. So. I want to get this car into a spray booth as soon as possible, so quickly making a stand and reusing the wheels off the rotisserie will get this car mobile once again. So all the footage you are about to see is a couple of days worth of work. So our plan is to spray the engine bay, door jams, inside of the doors, inside of the boot, inside of the bonnet first. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to guide coat the engine bay, the door jams and start by using 320 grit dry sandpaper and finish it off with 600 grit wet and dry sandpaper. The engine bay, I'm not even kidding, took about five, five or six hours worth of work because it's so intricate and my primer job came out really really thick so that didn't really help us but once it all sanded it looked very nice It was getting very, very late at this stage and if it wasn't for my friend Preston, the car would not have been in the spray booth that weekend. But there were two more jobs to do. One was to wash the car and the second job was to drill into the body of the car. So a three and a half inch hole saw was used on the driver's side and a three inch hole saw on the passenger side for the intercooler pipes to go through. Now that is a huge giveaway to what engine we are potentially putting into the car, obviously being a turbo engine since it needs intercooler pipes.
So there we have it. We are at the end of another episode. So the next episode, I'm actually going to be spray painting the car, revealing the color to you guys, and all the hard work, many, many, many months and hours that have been put into this car is finally going to come to life. So instead of spoiling it in this episode, I might as well make a very special separate episode on the color of the car we've chosen. Turn back on. So what we're gonna do right now is go through our color options. Pretty much you throw any color on an R34 Skylight and it will look amazing. Midnight purple, blue, black, white, gray, silver, millennium jade, whatever color you put on it, it'll look cool. But I'm gonna give you guys a bit of a hint to what color I might have chosen and what color I definitely did not choose. So we'll start with the crowd, the personal favorite, the internet's favorite color, Midnight Purple. Midnight Purple comes in two variants, Midnight Purple 2 and Midnight Purple 3. The differences are Midnight Purple 3 has a way crazier color shift and it might look cool on the internet and if you want big followers on Instagram and stuff, but in real life, it's definitely not something I would like to own. Um, maybe at the age of 20, but once you kind of grow up and mature a bit, I reckon I don't think I'd ever, like, I think I would dislike the color even more. I'm not saying I don't like it, I think it looks very cool. I would love to see a Midnight Purple 3 um, in person, but personally, just not a color for me. When it gets dark, I've seen a Midnight Purple 2, and in the dark, it doesn't look black. It looks kind of, like, it almost looks dirty, but in the right light, it looks amazing. I'm not hating on the color by no means, but personally, not for me. So the next color option is black. A uh, black R34 GTR looks very nice, especially with a set of polished wheels, or you can put some black wheels on it, go for that stealth look, very aggressive. I really like it. So in the, in, in the sun, it looks cool. At night, it will definitely look cool as well. Um, the only downside of this is swells, scratches, dust. So swells and scratches can be, you know, uh, proper like washing procedures, you know, you can kind of get away with it or getting the car fully wrapped in PPF, uh, paint protection film, that way you're never gonna have a swirl or a scratch on the car, but dust is the biggest one. I'm a part-time detailer and I know that the effort you have to go through in maintaining a dark colored car, especially being a black one. So even though it does look cool, it's definitely not a color that I've chosen for the car. Um, purely just because it's very hard to keep clean. Next up, we have, I think, white. So, we've got white. White looks amazing. Um, with the white, you can pull it off with a standard body kit, S-Tune, Z-Tune, uh, you know, if you kind of mix and match like a standard bonnet with some Z-Tune fenders, you can pretty much pull off anything. Any colored wheels you throw on white looks awesome, some darker tint, and you're good to go. Very easy to keep clean, you don't see scratches, you don't see swirls. The biggest downside of the white is though, um, it's very hard to adjust the exposure on the camera on a white car when it's sunny outside. So once my car is actually finished, it's not going to be like the majority of other YouTube builds where they get stored away and forgotten about forever. It's actually a car I wanna drive the crap out of. So um, the build series is literally like a like a little introduction, small little portion to what's actually, um, what's coming. So, white is not what we're gonna paint either. Silver, 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 silver. Silver looks awesome. My friend Scott has a silver one, which is, I guess, the biggest downside is I wouldn't want to copy his car because he already has a silver one. Uh, silver comes in a few variants as well, I believe three or four different colors. Um, so it'd be very tricky to pick the color that I really want. Like the Nismo one looks really cool, but then I've spoken to people that have actually been in the Nismo factory and they say it's, it's not as good as it looks in the pictures. So again, silver, I love it, looks aggressive, very easy to keep clean. You're never gonna see a swirl or a scratch on the car, but Scott's got one, so it's kind of like, there's no point of having two. Next color is blue, I think. So we'll just look at my desktop background here. Blue is, when you think of a Nissan Skyline, you think of a Bayside Blue R34. Now, blue looks awesome, and blue also comes in two different variants, being 
the earlier ones, which are like the 99 to 2001, I believe. And then the V-Spec 2 had its own little bit darker Bayside Blue, which again, it would be very hard to make my decision on which one I would choose. Um, but blue looks awesome. The biggest downside is literally every single R34 Skyline is Bayside Blue. So making mine different to the others out there would be very tricky, even though I have forever wanted a Bayside Blue R34 Skyline. Millennium Jade, another internet's favorite color. So I've I've kind of spent a bit of time around the Millennium Jade R34 GTR. Uh, the first day, I highly disliked the color. On the second and third day, it kind of grew on me. Uh, it's cool, but it's not that cool. Everybody that's commenting, paint your car Midnight Purple or Millennium Jade have probably never seen a Midnight Purple or Millennium Jade R34. Again, I'm not hating on the color. I think it does suit the car well, but there are other colors that, in my opinion, suit the car even better. So, Millennium Jade is probably not a colour we are going to choose. And next up we have my personal favourite colour which is red. Red looks absolutely amazing. Um, you're probably asking yourself, what's the downside of red? And to be honest, there are no downsides. You put nice light coloured wheels with a polished lid, black wheels, a bit of carbon, darker tint, and it's, it's literally perfect. I actually said it a few times, but I'm gonna unfollow this guy off Instagram because it pisses me off every single time I open up my newsfeed on Instagram or whatever it's called. This car pops up and it's honestly perfect. Like, I, I hated red R34 GTRs, like, highly, highly disliked them. And then a set of photos came out, I would say maybe a year or two ago of the car actually getting detailed. And the detailer took a bunch of amazing photos and that sold me on red. Very easy to spray because I think it's a solid color. It doesn't have any pearls, any flakes, nothing like that. Um, and the only problem with the red is that I have a red S14 that I painted a Mustang red. So it was a color code of a Ford Mustang that I sh It looks good, don't get me wrong, but now that I want a red Skyline, it's like maybe I should not have painted it that color because if the Sylvia and my Skyline are parked next to one another in the garage in two different shades of red, they'll drive me absolutely insane. So that's kind of the only reason why I didn't paint the car red, even though in the near future, if I have an opportunity to build another R34, red is 100% the color that I would choose. I think black would be the next color, even though I said black is an absolute nightmare to keep clean. And the next Skyline would have to be Savage, like some serious, silly horsepower, all-wheel drive. Um, so it needs a color to suit the purpose. Very, very aggressive, beautiful car. And I might actually go and just quickly unfollow his Instagram. <laughs> but yeah, that's going to be it for another episode. Next episode, we're actually going to spray paint my car. I don't know. I hate talking to a camera. I think that's how we're going to end every single video from now on. It's just me saying, I hate talking to a camera. See you in the next one. Don't hang with a nigga who lying for nothing I see that we different, you ride and I dub them I don't do discussions on bragging about hundreds Don't go to your places, I know that they sunken Don't call me your brother, I barely could trust you I talk to a shorty, she bagging the bucket And I'ma need all of my dollars on corporate So hand me the money, I divvy the pot I make it roll of my people a portion To build them a fortune, I'm flipping the ride I can't be mixy with iffy the vibe